Thank you for the invitation. Um, my name is Daniel Kostelski. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Chalkline Sports. Uh, today we're going to be talking about emerging technologies in, in tribal gaming. And I think that if you stick around for the rest of the day, you're going to see us talk about a lot of these topics in detail. We're probably just going to cover a lot of the ones uh, on, a, on a relatively surface level today. Um, for those that don't know, half of all the casinos in the United States are tribal casinos with their own gaming commissions. So it is a massive, massive industry. As discussed in a previous panel, uh, one of the more regulated as well, they each have gaming commissions. And so, um, you know, I think, I think what we're going to do is, is, is we've got a, a, a commissioner, we've got an operator, and we've got a, a supplier. And I, and I think that, you know, that from that perspective, we're going to be talking about, you know, what you know, what we're seeing out there that has, has worked recently and certainly what the future might look like from emerging technologies as well. Before we do that, though, we're just going to talk a little bit about, and this was discussed in the previous panel, just about that relationship between the uh, regulators, the gaming commissions, uh, rolling out new technologies. It's great to have it. How do you actually make that uh, come to fruition? Um, you know, maybe, uh, Chris, I'll just start with you. Maybe just take us through as an operator how you see that, that symbiotic relationship. Communication, uh, a lot of communication. Uh, it's education. Those relationships between the operators and the commissioners are very important. Um, and just sit down and speak with them and, and engage them and get them interested. And they're your friends. Like, you have to have the regulators on your side. So as soon as you find a technology that's going to work for your property, you have to get the commissioners involved immediately. Right. And, and your experience in sports betting here recently um, has, has certainly uh, enlightened you to, to the importance of that relationship? Yeah, we had a, a hiccup the first uh, the first week, and we launched, and uh, we worked through that, and with the state, and that relationship with the with the commissioners and the state regulators can be not great at times, and they like to overstep, and sometimes we have to politely tell them to back off, and um, but that was a long journey for us to get from RFP to launching our brick and mortar uh, sports book in January. And Brandon, your thoughts? I think it's critical. I mean, like you said, communication. You know, we, with our iGaming platform, we actually work with the state. So developing that relationship with the state, uh, developing the relationship with the operator to understand what their goals and what they're trying to do with their rollout is critical. Uh, having those conversations, um, I find that you know, the quicker that they get that we're all involved, the easier that process goes. So you know, example would be you know, operations. I want to roll this out but you don't talk with the commission. So now when it gets out closer to that launch, the commission's kind of in the dark, and now we're going back to you know phase one of this whole launch to understand what's going on. Um, it's easier from you know a regulator perspective to be involved. I mean, we don't obviously have to be involved in the, the money, but uh, the money decisions and all the signing of the cool paperwork, and but understanding the technology and understanding where we can help, because again, it's education for us as well. Uh, we're all learning together, and you know, building that relationship is critical. And, and do you find maybe it's it, that that education component is is best coming from the operator or or from the suppliers? Just just maybe how how do you see best practice for maybe for your your situation? To be honest, I think it's a shared vision. I think all three, you know, in that scope need to work together. Um, you know. You know, like the previous panels, there's such a high expertise in certain areas in the tribal gaming industry. Um, you know, when iGaming came out, it was kind of new to all of us, so we're all learning together. So being able to not only bridge uh, internally with your own operator, but work with other commissions, work with uh, the other, you know, uh, vendors or suppliers to understand, you know, what's going on and how you're going to launch it. Thank you. Uh, Tim, congratulations on your mega merger between IGT and, and Every. I'm sure you spent a couple of hours and sleepless nights putting that together. Uh, just take us through, you, you all supply uh, on a lot of different levels, uh, you know, lots of different ways you all supply the, the, the tribes, um, providing them with, with technology. What are some of those that, that you're excited about, something that you're seeing a lot of adoption in? What are, what are some of those, those technologies that you're, that you're seeing out there now? Oh, that's a good question. Thanks. 
Dan, it's going to be a long year, but uh, <laughs> it uh, more sleepless nights. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, look, I think um, I think there's uh, two, I think there's maybe two answers to that. There's sort of the practical answer of what's useful and what can you do today versus you know what's everybody talking about that may be useful in the future. And I think you're going to say that one's AI. Um, but I think that, uh, you know, for all, right, those, for all those bingo cards that people exactly. are like, yeah, yeah. machine learning. Yes. I like it. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, bingo is probably not the latest and greatest technology, but, but I do think that, um, you know, there's certainly a big movement in, I think from a tribal perspective and preparing for iGaming, preparing for sports betting and, and I think learning how to do that and, and beginning to do that across the property across the reservation, and doing it in such a way that uh, the systems that are being used are utilizing existing player databases, existing brands, existing marketing. So I, I think there's been a, a lot of interest in that and several suppliers attempting to provide those products and, and sort of emerging. Um, I think it's become uh, sort of a good step towards full legalization and, and those sort of mobile on-premise products. Um, I think more future-looking I do believe in AI. I think there's a lot there. I believe in you know things like quantum computing and all these kind of great things that are going to be happening over the next few years. I don't know that they're necessarily there at this grand scale that we want them to be or is perfected, but certainly a lot of chatter in that area, which means in five years there'll be some really good stuff. I do think there's some small scale use of these products, and uh, but just just uh, you know they're still learning, right? And 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 just from an operator's perspective, Chris, you know that that tie in that that. Tim's talking about how how are you all approaching that? What are suppliers that that you all have, or or ways that you've used technology in order to solve some of those some of those challenges? Oh, full disclosure, we use Chalkline for uh, free to play sports uh, sports games. Uh, it's a great product, and the data that we get just from our free to play, um, working with some other partners to study that data, predict you know use some AI to predict player behaviors. All that data is so important, and how it's we get the data. How do we use it? And that's the thing we have to use the data if we're going to spend the time and money to get it. Um, I love the AI piece to it. We're not there yet. Um, so you are currently using an AI piece. We're starting to. Okay. And and how are you specifically? And, and there's going to be a lot of talk in this converse, in this uh, conference about AI. Just. Hone in specifically on how you're using AI at your casino. So we're we're pulling uh, table games and slot and bingo data, sports betting a little bit. We're not integrated with loyalty, and we've dumped all this data into this engine, and they they've predicted player behaviors. It was so incredible, right? The data that we got from it, and it, we just got our first run of data. And just going through it, and it just completely blew my mind how close the, the model predicted what actually happened. So it's, it, it, I really, for me, I need to understand it more. But what we've done is pretty incredible, and I can't wait to talk more about it. Right. Okay, so AI specifically used around that player, the analysis of that player data, and then providing you all with insights on maybe how to personalize or how to, to set up your casino floor um, you, you know, what do people like inside the casino? Um, it's the analysis of that player data and maybe making a slightly more personalized uh, engagement uh, in, in your casino. Right, but also it can be, you can get so much data, it can be overwhelming, and how granular do you want to be with the data? You know, we can all slice and dice data however we want it to look, but at the end of the day, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. yeah. So maybe uh, there's a possibility of a diminishing returns on how much data and and the effectiveness of, of that right. data. When you all, you know, at the, at the gaming commissions, you know, how, how do you all see, you know, some of these emerging technologies that are blending these new forms of, of gambling together? Um, at the end of the day, it's really about the, the individual players. Um, but how do, how do you all look at um, you know how, how do you all look at, at the, the the legalization or the the, the um, you know allowing these these certain technologies to come in and, and be used inside the casinos? Again, it goes back into education. I mean, we're really learning on uh, leaning on the operator, leaning on you know the supplier, uh, the testing lab, to kind of get out ahead of those changes. Uh, it's definitely coming. You know, it's something that we're preparing for. We look, you know, we try to be out as, as advanced as possible and, you know, to be able to make those adjustments when it does all of a sudden, you know, that little light switch clicks on and here we go. 
um, we, I think you know, as we've grown uh, you know, with our property and as the commission, we have seen very quick rollouts. We've seen very you know, uh, slow rollouts, right? So understanding the speed of those rollouts and how that goes better prepares you to make an adjustment when new technology is available. Um, I think that's critical, you know, and understanding the benefits to the operator, like, you know, everything that he was just mentioning, you know, that from me as a regulator, putting the operator head on, that's data that I would love to have. So me as a regulator, why would I want to stop or put something in place to prevent him from doing what he can do to the best of his ability? Because at the end of the day, the check comes from the same place, right? My check says Pokagon ban, the operation says Pokagon ban. So we still need to make sure that we're making that, we're allowing our regulations to make that, uh, that revenue stream, you know, as well as being able to be in there to protect. You know, one great thing too is, uh, you know, the AI, you know, being able to do that. I, I think that's critical for, um, you know, the responsible gaming piece. You know, that's the data that we're going to need to be able to combat that. So again, as the regulator, hey, let's let's endorse this. You know. Nice. And and just going back to the the the, the player data, Tim. Um, you all have loyalty programs. How are you all seeing maybe some emerging technologies play out in uh, player loyalty in in fintech? Um, you know, cash cashless has been a, a conversation. Um, just maybe talk us through some of the some of the new and upcoming things that, that you all are looking at to to deploy into into tribal country. Yeah, I think um, as it relates to sort of intelligence AI, you know, better tools. We're seeing that across, I would say, payments and fintech today, just being smarter about who's doing transactions, trying to reduce fraud, um, keeping bad actors out of the facility, um, which you know, is not good for anyone. Uh, so, so I think we're seeing better tools there with us and our partners, um, for sure. Um, it might not be something that you see on the floor, but it's what's happening in the background. So we are definitely getting smarter. Um, I think from a loyalty perspective, you know, there's a lot of good intelligence tools out there specifically related to that, but they're constantly being refined and growing and learning, you know, and, and allowing you to be more targeted and more specific to what you're doing. Um, but ultimately, you know, is it engaging? Are you, is the end result engaging to the, to the players? Or is it engaging? Um, is it bringing them back? Is that, uh, you know, you can target, but um, I think what we really focus on also on the loyalty side is that engagement. I probably much like you do as well with Chalkline, right? You know, how, what happens when you do find that player? How do you get them into the property? How do you, you know, provide some sort of gamified promotion? How do you provide them with an offer? What do you provide them with to get another visit out of them or to get them to, to stop and have dinner um, and maybe get, get a little more spend out of them? And, I, and I, I think that's been a lot of where our focus has been um, over the last few years, and I think it's, it's kind of worked quite well. And so when, when uh, you know, there's this, this focus on un understanding those customers, how does that play out? You know, Chris, now that you've, you've rolled out alternative forms of gaming, you know, how important is that is that player data uh, for those that um, for those that may not know? You know, there's a, there's an uncarded uh, you know percentage of revenue inside the land-based casinos, um, anywhere between you know 35 to to 30 percent. I was talking to a gentleman last night. He he's at 28 percent, which he was he was impressed. He was he thought that was really good. So there's a lot of of revenue that comes from people that you don't really know, right? So maybe just talk a little bit about. Now, now that you've got this additional form of, of gaming, you've got you know a sports book. How does that help you all from a from a player perspective and from a patron perspective in, in collecting data um, that you might not have been able to collect otherwise? We need to you know we need to be able to capture it. So if we're, our systems aren't integrated, and, and I'll just take it outside of gaming. You know we have a beautiful golf course and a beautiful spa on property now, and those players are just valuable. We need to get those those card swipes. We can send offers to the spa or the golf course or food and beverage. So outside of, you know, just the gaming technology, those players are so valuable also. So we have to, to make sure we're, we're capturing all that player data and segment, and maybe we start segmenting, you know, the spa, the spa um, person comes in and spends $500, you know, and then their, their spouse goes and plays golf. Like we, that's all that data is so important. So we have to use that and, and, you know, send them offers so they come back and get incremental trips and, you know. Right. So looking at your resort from a holistic perspective yes. and identifying like almost a single view of a customer on all the different things that they could do, whether that's buy tickets, uh, play golf, you know, game on the Every. casino floor, mm -hmm. absolutely everything and trying to capture all of that. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, and, and just on the, on the commission side, uh, uh, Brandon, you, you know, the people are going to come, people are, are, are going to see emerging technologies, and, and it's going to be from probably from left field. How do you all, how do you all look at, you, you know, that, that proposal that comes in, and, and you don't, you've never heard of it, you've never thought about it, like, what, how do you all approach that as a, as a commission? So it's, we've actually developed our own strategic plan to where we're forecasting the oddest things. I, it was quite interesting to see our staff come back with uh, some of the things that could possibly be here in 10 years, you know, and, and even sitting here listening to you guys talk about getting the card swipe set, you know, at the golf course. Now we're going to put kiosks at, you know, each hole and, you know, they're going to be betting on each other and, you know, and then there's, it's all sorts of, when we're doing that planning, we're thinking of that that possibility, right? So understanding that, you know, it may be initially launched as this platform that it's going to be able to do this, but understanding that the technology is growing so rapidly that it can evolve into other things. Um, you know, being able to prepare for those and put yourself in the best situation is, I, is absolutely critical to success. You know, I think the main thing that we lean on is our relationship with the operator. The operator is the one that's driving that technology. Without them, we may never see it. You know, maybe they didn't want the AI and the rest of the industry is. You know, I don't have personal experience until it comes through my operation. So having that relationship with the operator as far as the planning of the new technologies is absolutely critical. We've actually partnered with our operator where we're going to G2E and, you know, spending time with their sales team and seeing what's coming through and being able to answer questions there that they may not be able to answer. You have a commission employer right there being able to answer regulation questions. So taking those approaches has put us in a better place, I feel, regulation-wise, and, you know, our relationship with the operator, I feel, has grown as well. I just wanted to speak on that too. I think it's important when when we go to like GTB or IGA that we bring, you know, whether it's tribal council, yep. board of directors, gaming commissioners to the high level meetings to if something that we want to roll out or thinking about rolling out. Um, and one other thing I want to touch on too is is when we bring in new technologies, you know, what's the bandwidth within the organization and can they handle it? Do you have the resources available to assist? Because it's not just me bringing in a product; it's working with marketing and IT and um, finance or whatever other uh, areas need to be involved and you, you can't come in and and expect all the want to do all these things which I'm kind of I you know sports betting was launched you know <laughs> we finally did that but you know what's the next thing we're doing and and you, we have to have the resources on property otherwise it's a it's not going to be a good journey for the player yeah and to piggyback real quick off of what he was saying you made a great point about bringing council on board or bringing uh, you know with the regulators you know, especially in, with those that aren't familiar with tribal council, they're not there as often as what the operator or the regulator is. So your, their experience when they're seeing this stuff is firsthand. And when you start talking and using your little tech terms and, you know, and all of this, it completely overwhelms them. So having that everybody in the room learning together, right, bringing everybody to the same place and saying, this is what we want to do, this is how we want to do it, what roadblocks are we going to face? That is critical, I feel, to the success of the organization. That's a good point. So, so uh, I think it was two years ago in 2022, uh, there was over $40 billion, uh uh, in GGR in, the, in, in tribal gaming, um, I'm sure that next this 2023, when the numbers come out, uh, that those are, are, are going to be record numbers again. You, you know, and, and that only happens by innovation. That only happens by you know bringing in that new technology. T Tim, when when you all introduce uh, you know different types of technology in, in, in for the casino space, how do you all how do you all approach it? Um, you know, there's a, there's, you all have the expertise, so do you all sit and work with the gaming commissions as well as those casinos to, to make sure that everybody does understand what it is that, that, that is coming and, and, and how to implement it as well? There's the strategy and then there's the implementation. Yeah, I mean, that's a, I, look, I think there's a lot that happens before that, right? I think, um, A, we think much differently about tribal gaming than we do commercial gaming. They're very different organizations, very different uh, jurisdictions, rules, regulations, what they can and can't do, uh, very different to work with. So so we do, A, think differently about travel gaming than we do commercial. So, um, and, and what we try to think about there is, you know, where are they today? Where do we think it's going to go, you know, in the future? 
especially right now when you see iGaming, you see sports betting, you see a lot happening on the commercial side. There's other challenges in travel gaming for that that uh, that that where we can begin to prepare for that. So I think from our perspective, we try to look ahead, try to sit down with some key customers, go through those questions, and understand um, what is appealing, what's not appealing, what's allowed to be done, are there regulations that need to be changed, what's in statute versus regulation, you know, where's that flexibility at? And um, and we certainly do that. Uh, I, I think then it then it really comes down to once you have the product, and it is so different, for instance, talk about on-premise mobile gaming, you know, are we sitting down with uh, the operator, sitting down with the tribal? I mean, I can tell you it's one tribe, significant uh, amount of work going through their own regulations and, and seeing how they align and what is relevant, what is not relevant. Um, this is an area where, um, I'll just use Nevada as an example, but, you know, Nevada put mobile regulation in place for mobile gaming. But, but that's effectively a tablet that acts like a slot machine. You know, that's the regulation. You know, it has to have this encrypted game software. It's, it's horrible, right? It's just horrible. But that's what was done 10, 15 years ago. So now you think about well, who would have ever done that? You know, well, why does that make any sense? And what it's going to take to change those? And, and hopefully it's all in regulation as opposed to statute. So there's a lot that goes into that thinking and then trying to figure out how to deliver a product that um, we can't easily deliver that fits within that, working with tribes, working with attorneys, working with you know, maybe even lobbyists um, to, to do that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an effort. It's not an overnight right. you know, thing it, for new technology. And it goes back to those first points around regulators, commissioners, gaming, suppliers, like working closely together and getting everybody on the same page. You know, I, I can imagine that there would be times when you and the gaming operators, like, can we get this through as quickly as possible, right? And especially, you know, now there's some of that. Whereas the commission is saying, hey, you know, we need to make sure we understand it and the suppliers are making sure that, that it's compliant to, to, the, to the commissions. And just um, to touch on that real quick. Like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. When, when we want to get a project done, uh, I want to go as fast as possible. We all want to get it launched. And for me, I sometimes get way ahead of myself and, you know, have to, you know, check myself and slow down because it is a slow process. And, and the commissioners and, and the suppliers are all on our side. And it's, the, it's going back to the beginning, it's just communication and take your time. It's, it'll all work out. Yes, be very deliberate about getting all of the stakeholders on on, on board. It's Brandon amazing. from us, it's we want to go as slow as we can. <laughs> we don't want something coming out of left field to hit us to where uh, I have to do paperwork for a long time. <laughs> so, but, but it's really about it's really about knowing all of the stakeholders and what yeah. their roles are. And, and if you if you come in blind, y yes, you're going to become frustrated and, and, and that's, you know, you know, that's not productive. It's really about just, you know, making sure that everybody's on the same team um, and that if there is a, a hurdle or two, then then everybody's trying to jump over that hurdle kind of at the same time and doing, doing the same, same things. Are there any limitations right now, Tim? Right now, limitations in technology that you think are, are maybe kind of getting in the, in the way of, of, of growth? No, I mean, technology limitations? No, I mean, look, I, I think at the end of the day, it, you know, even that whole process I just described, I mean, it's going to take a couple of years to build out those products, right? And, and technology is going to change. Technology changes so fast. I mean, it, it, to me, um, I, I put it all to the root of that, which is, uh, you know, smarter, faster, better algorithms, but also smarter, better, faster technology, you know, creates this technology curve that I don't know that we can keep up with. Now, gaming is always cutting edge. Um, from the 90s. So it, it takes a long time for gaming to adopt this. So I don't know that technology, especially regulated product, is the problem. I think it's, you know, an example I gave, I have to go convince a CEO to say, hey, I'm going to go invest two, three, four million dollars in a product. We're going to start getting a return in three years, but I'm probably not going to get an ROI for four or five years. Do you believe in this? And by the end of that, technology may change, right? I mean, it's, and but the great thing is about gaming, I have to prepare and buy a certain computer chip and guarantee a supply for five years from some guy in Taiwan, right? Just to make sure that, you know, I can supply the chain. So I don't know that uh, technology is our issue other than technology changes faster than we can keep up and gaming is not really supportive of that. And it's just, I'm not talking about gaming as an operator, it's just gaming regulation, right? Um, it's tough. And to piggyback off that a little bit, we can prepare with technology, using technology to prepare for that to, those quicker rollouts, right? You know, that's something we're 
something I'm pretty passionate about. We're building our own technology to have that that knowledge base for our people, not only in the commission but for the operator side as well. So that knowledge is much is always there. We get turnover. You guys have turnover just as much as we do. So keeping that knowledge to continue grow with the technology and trying to keep that race even, that's something we've tried to do to prepare. Yeah, and, and what, uh, exactly. And, and I say in addition, just to clarify even the point around regulated versus unregulated product, I think that's where you get a great opportunity for something like AI and better business intelligence and marketing tools to succeed. Because generally speaking, they don't require the same scrutiny or any scrutiny. So I think those types of products on that side of the fence – can't flourish much faster than something that is very gaming specific. Yeah. We, we've got a little bit of time. Does anybody have any any questions for, for the panel? Going once. Go ahead. Yes. yes. Go right ahead. You went into Michigan sports betting online, iGaming, in the iLottery market. What was that experience like for you working with the state of that? Do you see all of my gray hair? <laughs> On his beard, he um, has gray hair. Again, I think it it was a, a learning experience. Uh, and it's something that I have used as I've as we've continued. All of those lear- lessons learned from that have been incredible. Developing the relationship with uh, the, the the state, you know, and understanding that what their understanding role was with that, because you're completely took that out of our hands, right? It's all state ran. Now, to be comfortable with the state understanding, hey, this is what I do when I verify server contests. And understanding I'm, I'm handing this off to you. This is my baby, and I have to understand that you're going to protect it the same way I would. So that was, I think, was one of our biggest hurdles. Uh, and, you know, understanding how the technology was going to work with those and, you know, how the, where the certification labs were going to help with those. Um, I came away with it learning so much, and I've been trying to take those lessons learned and applying it to every day. And I think that that's why it's made it easier for us to develop the relationships that we need to. It was definitely a challenge, but I think it was a, a very good challenge. Thanks for that. Thanks for that question. So that, that wraps up the panel. Can I get everybody to give them a nice round of applause? They did a great job.